Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 24th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I noticed today a little shift in some of the scans we are seeing against our web honeypots. We have seen for quite a while now scans for files that often hold environment variables like env, .env and various variations thereof. The shift that I noticed today is that attackers are looking for what looks like shell scripts that set these environment variables like env.sh. Also, some scripts that are commonly used to start up Docker environments, like startup.sh, bucket.sh, or driver or develop.sh. Interesting little shift. I'm sure attackers have noticed that the developers and uh, also as part of DevOps pipelines, these files are sometimes left behind and accessible in your web route. So uh, better uh, double check and make sure that you are removing these files from the web route. Ideally, of course, you're using some kind of secrets management system in order to keep track of of various API keys, passwords, and the like that are required for your application. But at a minimum, make sure any configuration files like this are outside the web route. It looks like FortiGate isn't really getting a break here when it comes to vulnerabilities in FortiManager. We have yet another actively exploited vulnerability in FortiManager, in particular the FGFMD daemon is vulnerable here. It's an unauthenticated uh, feature, so missing authentication that's causing the problem, apparently exploited via a crafted request. But typically, these kind of exploits don't really require a lot of crafting because often all you need to do is omit the credentials in order to achieve your goal. Again, this is already being exploited. There have been, I think, four of these vulnerabilities now in like, you know, recent uh, few days or a week or so. So if you haven't updated 40 manager before like you start listening to this podcast uh, just update it again uh, there's probably yet another uh, vulnerability now that requires you to update and as mentioned before really make sure that 40 manager is not exposed to the world and CISA warns that uh, SharePoint deserialization vulnerability that was fixed by Microsoft back in July is now actively being exploited. So uh, definitely uh, make sure that you got this patched. A proof of concept exploit for these vulnerabilities has been available on GitHub for about three months now, and I'll link to them in the show notes, but uh, probably has been exploited for quite a while. Just CISA has now gotten around to actually add this vulnerability to its known exploited vulnerability catalog. And about a week ago, OpenSSL released an update for its library that fixed a single vulnerability that was rated as low according to OpenSSL. This rating has now been disputed by some Linux distributions. They rate the CVSS score, which the OpenSSL project did not provide as 8.7, which sort of puts it at least the high, probably better the critical range. The issue here is that this vulnerability theoretically may allow remote code execution. However, as pointed out by OpenSL in the advisory, and I'll link to that in the show notes, current applications don't actually allow attackers to provide arbitrary elliptic curve parameters as is required to exploit this vulnerability. So I'll leave it up to you to figure out what to do here, but probably just get it over with and patch if you haven't already done so. And Apple has put forward a proposal for voting within the CA browser forum that is basically defining the rules by which certificate authorities have to abide by 
to reduce uh, the lifetime of uh, certificates even further than uh, currently. So currently, a certificate obtained from a public sector authority cannot be valid for more than 398 days, which basically works out to 13 months. This is going to be reduced first to 200 days in September 2025, then to 100 days in September 2026, finally to 45 days in April of 2027, and then 10 days in September of 2027. This stepwise approach apparently is supposed to get people used to these shorter and shorter expiration dates. Well, definitely make sure you automate a certificate renewal as much as possible. This is still a proposal under review, so no particular decision has been made yet. There was an attempt by Google to reduce it to 90 days overall, but uh, also that uh, hasn't really sort of found a majority. We'll see where it all ends up. Uh, This is under discussion at this point, but it's quite likely that in the next year or two, there will be a reduction in the maximum lifetime of certificates. And again, this only applies to certificates obtained from public certificate authorities. If you do have your own private self authority, typically those rules don't apply and browsers do not apply those rules to any manually added set of authorities. But that, of course, depends on operating system and browser somewhat. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.